I mean, I know of people who've lost their parents and have showed up to play, yeah, to play. because they were playing for the country. Yeah. Um, and uh, I know people who are very close to me. That's happened too. Mm. Um, and uh, you know, I hope that that no person should be put in that position, position. Yeah. to uh, where you know you have to be like, no, well, I need to do this, even though I've lost someone very close to me. Yeah. Um, you know, we're talking about very extreme case here, but I'm saying I'm just talking about having a stomach ache. You Simple. know, you yeah. know, I'm ha I'm talking about a woman having her period. Yeah. yeah. People don't even talk about it. Do you think athletes don't have a menstrual cycle? Like yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. This is so special for the entire team of Humans of Bombay. It's our first interview in this studio. And we couldn't believe that you have come. So thank you so much. No, thanks for having me. Actually, technically, I'm not Humans of Bombay on paper. But actually, I am because I was born, born in Bombay. Bombay. Yeah, we've done so, so much research on you that we, <laughs> you know we it. Know huh? <laughs> you were born in Bombay and then moved. My mom's from Bombay as well. Okay. So this was always my second home yeah. uh, growing up. So it's uh, so closer to home. So now. technically, yeah. yeah technically. Yeah. Technically, <laughs> I can be humans of Bombay. <laughs> Amazing. I'm going to start with this question that, um, you know, we found very powerful in our research. Uh, you said something that when I retire, I'd rather be asked why rather than when. And that's exactly what you did. You did it at your yeah. own terms. You did it when you felt the time was right. But still, was it a difficult deci decision? Yeah, very difficult because I think that uh, I've done it for 30 years of my life. I was six years old when I started playing tennis. I'm 36 today. It's literally the only thing I know that I'm really good at right. um, or I was really good at. And um, when I had a baby uh, or when I decided to have a baby, people thought I was mad because they were like at the peak of a career, you know, you're having a baby. It's a little bit like how Alia is being asked, like, mm. you know, having a baby at the peak of your career. But um, the thing was, even at that point, I was like, no, I think the time's right. So I'm very much of a, of a opinion of my life that my life has to be according to me. Whether that's good, bad, right decisions, wrong decisions, it needs to be taken by me and needs to be in my control. And uh, when I had the baby, I didn't uh, announce retirement because I knew that I had still, you know, some tennis left in me yeah. at the highest level. And um, I waited, uh, you know, I played and, and obviously then COVID happened. So there were a lot of like kind of bumps in the way. Um, and then, um, yeah, I made the final of Australian Open. And I I don't know how to explain it, but I just knew that, yeah. um, you know, this was the time and everybody was like, um, you know, why, like, people, media, except my parents. I think they kind of had a question, but they didn't want to ask me as well. Yeah. But everybody was like, you know, you still have it in you to obviously play at the highest level. And I said, yeah, but that's um, what I want to do. I want to choose to, uh, yeah. yeah, I want to choose to retire. I don't want to be forced to retire. Yeah. And it's very important for me uh, to go out on a higher. And there's no right or wrong. Some people can do it the other way and it's fine. But for me, it was very personally important. Um, so yeah, it was um, it was actually the best way that I could go if I had to um, think of my life and be like, you know what, like this is where I'd like to stop. It would be on a center court of a Grand Slam, and wow, and yeah. that's something that I was very fortunate to be able to do um, on my own terms. Thanks to thanks to God, obviously, but uh, yeah, it's something that I kind of live by. You know that line. It's yeah. it's something that I always. Uh, want to um, and I will continue to aspire to be in that uh, that sense because for me it's very important that we live according to our own terms and make our own decisions and have life in kind of in our own hands. Yeah, like not conforming to what's the right thing to do but doing what's right for you. There is no right and wrong, you right. know, I and mean, we live in a society which kind of um, makes these boundaries of right and wrong and, and your right could be my wrong and vice versa and I think that, um, you know, it's time that we kind of come out of those um, you know, yeah. stereotypes. Well, yeah, yeah, stereotypes and cultural uh, sort of norms that have been going on yeah. for years and years of, um, you know, a girl needs to be married at a certain age and have kids at a certain age and life kind of gets over after, after that, that, right? Yeah. 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 Um, but that's just not uh, something that I think you and I are women like us think of, exactly. you know, it's just yeah. not something that we feel is um, the way to do. And that's, that's all right. And there's some women who want to get married at whatever that, you know, young age is. And, and, and it's that's fine. fine and it's fine. Yeah. You know, it's just as long as it's, you're happy and you're making your own decision yeah. about it. I remember that image of you hugging your son. Yeah. 
on the court and it just spoke so many different volumes of you know um, everything you just spoke about yeah. that life doesn't cease to exist after you become a mother or vice versa right like yeah. you retired when you felt you wanted to retire not because you became a mother or not because no i actually retired because i was not finding the motivation to go out and work yeah and that and i'm not ashamed to admit that and and i mean i was i i turned professional in 2003 we're in 2023 and i was sitting in a press conference about a week ago and some uh, somebody asked me don't you think you retired too early and i said do you know how many years i've been professional for and i played another 10 years before that um the thing is that i think that um you know um to be at the highest level for me um and and we all try to be the best version of ourselves in whatever we do right otherwise why are we doing yeah. it nobody wants to be mediocre exactly. like everybody wants to be the best in, in or what they can be so everybody's best is different and some people are lucky where you know i was very fortunate that my my best was the best in the world right. um you know so yeah. that was just where yeah. i was yeah. in terms of where it was but it's different for everybody but we try and be the better than yesterday basically yeah. and um for me it was um <laughs> Uh, to be that i had to have 100% motivation and um the days of not feeling to go and practice were beginning to be more and more right. over the last one year it's you know it's a disservice you know like if it if, is yeah. it is because it was really not about the level of tennis that i was playing exactly. obviously it exactly. was about how i was feeling mentally and at that point i chose to put my mental health first yeah. and also i chose to put my son first in this moment yeah. and say that uh, you know i think it's time and i want to spend more time and do the boring pickups and drop offs um, <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah. for the school. routine the routine yeah. and and not live out of a suitcase yeah. um Or, all the time all the time i mean i used to travel 30 weeks a year you know it's That's a lot very, yeah, it's, it's a, a lot. lot uh just as a person it's a lot as a mother it's even more mm. you know so yeah. um yeah that's where uh, really you know it kind of like took me a year to sort of settle with that idea and and that's how i, I reached that decision and i'm so happy you know not many people get to do it on their own terms exactly some you know? people yeah some un- people are yeah. forced some yeah. people get hurt yeah. you know so i was very fortunate that i was able to do that yeah and have you given a thought to the purpose that you were speaking about or will that also be a gradual process where you're like you know as time passes I'll you know um i've actually like i've been working so i've been doing a lot of um i've been doing some tv stuff and the, but all this is not really a purpose i mean we're doing this because it's work but it's not something that uh like when i uh, went to play a tennis match or even when i went to practice or warm up i knew my purpose was to try to reach a certain goal yeah i mean with tv i'm not reaching a goal yeah. you know like i'm i'm working yeah. but uh, so i'm still trying to find that purpose but i think my main purpose right now is to try and be a more a full time mother i won't say that a, a completely like where i'm going to just like put everything aside but um you know I, it is trying to just give him more stability i feel like at four and a half he probably needs me a little bit more he's growing into the person that he's going to be and and i feel like he needs me to be around and he also even though he traveled with me a lot i feel like the stability that you get in your own home is very different to traveling in hotels uh, on planes yeah. um so i think that you know again uh, coming back to i think we all priorities change as life kind of happens yeah. you know and things happen in your life where you move forward and and um, you know there are some good things there are some bad things but then you got to like alter your life kind of choices according fluid, to it basically yeah, yeah right i mean we all have to be that way yeah. we can't be, be so like l- staying in a lane that no this is what i thought exactly. i'm going to do 5 years ago this is what i'm going to continue to do i mean life kind of happens and you have to kind of adjust so yeah. yeah it's so interesting that you said you know that you started playing tennis when you were 6 today you're 36 that's a 30 year long yeah active participation what you're really good at but you know unfortunately that's not the case with a lot of say children especially maybe girl children when they when they have that knack for sport when they're really good at a particular sport the the identification by a parent is super pivotal and that i think that role even in terms of coaching for you was your father actually it was not it was my mom who took me to the practice course the first time oh wow and she was the one who uh, kind of fought the coach to say no it's okay and he was like she's too small and she's like no it's okay i want her to play 
and um, I, I was very fortunate, I think, to come from a family that was very ahead of their times. I mean, I'll be very honest. And uh, coming from a middle class Muslim family from Hyderabad, it was not easy for my parents to say, yeah, our girl is going to, our firstborn is a girl who's going to pick up a sport that nobody has done or excelled at. at before. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. it sounds mad. It's like but, all the odds are. Right? Like, I mean, it you. sounds crazy, yeah. but that's what it was. Yeah. And... Um, I think that I was just so fortunate to ha find that uh, or have that uh, in my parents mm -hmm. where they kind of guided me to what I was really good at. So I used to swim, I used to skate, I used to play tennis. I was much better at tennis obviously than the other two things. <laughs> <laughs> and um, my parents kind of just, they almost nudged me. They didn't, never pushed me. You know, they never were like, yeah. so if I used to say, I, oh, I don't want to go practice. I want to go to a birthday party. They were like, okay. They never were like, no, 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 but you have to go practice. So I never had that mad pressure yeah. where I was like, this is what, but of course they wanted me to excel. Yeah. Um, they just had a really good way of balancing it where I wouldn't feel that pressure. You right. know, so I was very, very fortunate. So you were making your own choices effectively even when you were that young. Yeah, without knowing them. Without. Knowing right. Them. Like, yeah. I mean, and I think that today parenting has changed a lot, right? Yeah. Like we read so much and um, I mean I do and, and I know that I try and find ways to be better um, you know and, and not just as a parent but as a person for yeah. the sake of for the sake of my child and um, I feel like we're so much more aware of like you know like my child like is hands four mm -hmm. but since he was like two or since he was being was able to speak I was like do you want to have eggs or would you want to have bread and it's such a conscious, conscious effort, effort that we're making yeah, yeah. because it's so important because you're you read about things and you know you speak to shrinks and they're like you know this is how you have to speak to your child right. so that then they eventually but I think my parents just had that so naturally yeah. you know they didn't really um i don't think they went Try. into yeah. any, any parenting you know like i'm pretty positive <laughs> that didn't happen i think it came to the natural so that's why i'm saying i'm yeah. very fortunate and lucky yeah at what point did you think or you know your parents also realize i'm sure it happened in some kind of a symbiotic way is that this is a this is a this very, is my calling yeah this is a very um, legitimate career choice i think i knew um that i wanted it to be my career choice and it sounds crazy but i was 12 um, and I had won the nationals in under 14 and under 16 in Delhi on the same day. It was called Aridas Masters at that point. And on the same day, being 12, I had won it. And, and I had uh, gotten my first brand endorsement in Adidas. Wow. That's right. And um, I think that day was really the day when I thought, you know what? I think I'm pretty good at this. Like before that, I was quite a, a geek and I wanted to be... I didn't want to miss school and I wanted to be over 90s. I was that kind of student, mm -hmm. um, you know, and I was like very, but I was very competitive even then in school as well. So I guess that's where that competitive, yeah, yeah, that that was there, that yeah. gene was there. Um, yeah, and, 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 and after 12, like, and then I won Junior Wimbledon at 15. So I think I was between that 12 and 15 was really yeah. when I knew, okay, this is what I would like to do um, as a career option. Mm -hmm. Um, and my parents, I mean, so much credit to them, right? Like they just kind of were like, okay, yeah. well, I mean, it's difficult and it's never been done before, but <laughs> we'll give it a shot. Yeah, let's give it a and, shot. And, um, you know, they were, they were called mad and they were called crazy. Of course, I mean, yeah. anybody would, yeah. um, you know, because they were like, oh, we, you know, we want her to play Wimbledon one day. And they were like, and people were like, oh, mm. what makes <laughs> yeah. you think that's going to happen? happen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, that's probably between 12 and 15, 15. I would say. Yeah. But... You won't believe it. There's never been a day in our life where we sat down and we're like, okay, today, from today onwards, we're going to be a professional tennis player. Like that never happened. Like it wasn't a roundtable discussion. Being never. Like, okay, let's choose this as a career. Never. Part. It was always part of my life. It was never my life. Wow. And it takes a, and that's all credit to my parents. Yeah. That's not really me, you know, because I think that they found that um, balance yeah. uh, to, so like a, I'll tell you a small story. When I was a kid and I used to play these matches like we used to go for these state tournaments and um, I used to lose a match and I used to never cry like other kids I used no. to never cry and the other parents used to be like why doesn't she cry like does she not care and my parents were like no I mean you know whatever it's okay she lost like no big deal so whenever we used to be an out uh, of Hyderabad playing tournaments and whether I won a match or lost a match we used to every day go and eat ice cream so sweet yeah so my parents didn't want like, oh, if you win, we'll go and eat ice cream. And if you lose, we won't. In their very subtle way, 
they made that you know that took the pressure off me because I didn't feel like so for like a child yeah. what is the most important thing probably ice cream at that yeah, point of yeah. time anyway and I'm like well I'm gonna get it anyway, anyway right? whether I win or lose so my life was not my life's yeah. uh, events of the day were not dependent on that tennis match that I was playing yeah. and that today at 36 is a lot you know, I can understand it so much better, right? Like at that point, you're not really understanding it. You're just like, my parents are really nice. Like they're giving me ice cream <laughs> regardless. Sweet, yeah. Yeah. I'm getting the ice cream. <laughs> so that, they did small things like that yeah. to take the pressure off and make me always believe that, you know, tennis is a very important part of your life, but it's not your life. So yeah. if you want to not play at any given point, you let us know yeah. and you can stop. stop. And it's also okay to lose because... I mean, you have to lose. <laughs> you have to. Yeah. I promise you, any athlete that you will speak to, and I hope you speak to many more in this studio, yeah. um, they lose much more than they actually when they start winning. So at the beginning of your career, you lose a lot. Yeah. Everybody. Yeah. It could be anybody in the world, mm. any athlete. Mm. Because that's the that's the way things work, you know. You just don't come and start winning. Like exactly. that's it just not how life happen. works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So losing... Um, and winning actually on a tennis court has actually shaped me in so many ways outside which is why I keep saying how important sport is for kids yeah, yeah. Um, today to have that in a curriculum in school to have that like if you the way you have maths English and you know geography you need to have sport because sport teaches you life skills yeah what and the other like, stuff doesn't yeah like it it really doesn't I promise you I've not gone to yeah. I've not gone to college and I know that I have life skills where I'm able to deal with adversity in ways um, which I don't think any education system could have given me. Exactly. Having said that, I think education is very important yeah. because I think it is part of, um, you know, what you want to become eventually. But it is very important to play sport, yeah. equally important. Yeah. Um, you know, we deal with wins and losses on a daily basis and to be able to lose today mm -hmm. And then come back tomorrow and try again to be better and to do that, do that over 30 years. <laughs> yeah, it, it teaches you. It just teaches you yeah. there's it's a never say die attitude. Yeah. And That's it what it teaches you. Yeah, it yeah. builds your character because you feel like, yeah, okay, it's fine. We lost. Yeah. We'll try again tomorrow. It's not a big deal. No, it's, it's not. The end of the world. So when yeah. you have, even in life, when I have a bad day, I'm like, yeah, tomorrow will be better. Better. Yeah, I'll wake up and it'll be yeah. better so again. Yeah, so that is the life skill that sport yeah. has taught me. Yeah. And were you like this from the very beginning? You mentioned that, you know, you would not cry. But dealing with loss in general as a as a kid is far more daunting than, you know, I mean, it could be daunting as an adult. But how would you deal with failure? I think I was pretty good at it, to be very honest. I don't think that I... Um, like, I would feel bad, but I would not feel bad for very long. Yeah. I would get over it pretty soon. soon. Yeah. yeah. And... Um, I think as I grew older, I mean, there are some losses that hurt more than the others, mm. um, you know, but um, in general, as an athlete, we cannot dwell on a loss for too long. Yeah. You just can't. It's just the nature of things. We have to perform every week and we have to perform yeah. every day. We have to win five matches to win a tournament. And if you don't win five matches, you're probably you're losing. Yeah. So in a draw of 64 people, there are 63 people that are losing and there's only one, one winner. winner. So yeah. you might lose in the final, but you're going to lose. Yeah. So there are not many people that win all the time. You know, you yeah. might win two matches or three. So I, we just... The, you know, that's why sport is the best leveler in the world yeah. for your head as well and for people as well. Because it not only teaches you how to deal with loss, but it also teaches you how to be humble in victory. Because if you can win this tournament today and you can go tomorrow and lose in the first round and you're back to reality in exactly 24 hours. It's unbelievable. Like the turnaround time is... It's, it's nothing. It's, nothing. it's yeah. literally nothing. So you have no choice but to get over it. There's no time to wallow. No. <laughs> like we must. Which is good yeah. and bad. But like, I mean, there's a lot of uh, athletes now coming out and speaking on mental health, you right. know, which, which is very, very good because yeah. I think that people sometimes forget that our athletes, we also have the same emotions that, I mean, imagine when you're watching a match or like mm. a cricket match and, you know, fans get upset and angry. Imagine what the <laughs> players are actually feeling. It's, it's you know, because yeah. they are the ones that are put the effort in yeah. to reach that yeah. stage yeah. Um, but I think that you know we've we expect the athletes to be almost mechanical in a way where they're not supposed to have an emotion um, that is too loud yeah. they're not supposed to have 
uh, a bad day and you know and if they have so I always tell people if you have a bad day you know 40 people in your office might know about it or your you know partner mm -hmm. might yeah. know about it if I have a bad day every the whole entire know. world knows about uh, it yeah. and every, the entire world has an opinion about it yeah. too yeah so it's a so I think people it's, it takes forget. a toll yeah. Yeah. you know on the mental health of athletes so we interviewed a uh, Chahal recently and he said the same thing he said that he lost his dear friend uh, Andrew Simmons and he's like I had a match that day yeah and I couldn't I just like you know like I couldn't operate on the field yeah if you have a bad day you can take off work yeah. I'm I'm representing my country yeah. but I will have bad days and that's what I mean I know of people who've lost their parents and have showed up to play yeah, to play because they were playing for the country yeah um, and uh, I know people who are very close to me that's happened too um, and you know I hope that that no person should be put in that position, position. Yeah. to uh, where you know you have to be like no well I need to do this even though I've lost someone very close to me yeah. um, you know we're talking about very extreme case here but I'm saying I'm just talking about having a stomach ache you Simple. know you yeah. know I'm, ha I'm talking about a woman having her period yeah, yeah. People don't even talk about it. Do you think athletes don't have a menstrual cycle? Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like you know, like I, I, I talk to people and um, they're like, um, you know, girls or whatever. And they're like, oh, I'm so like, I, I can't. Can I come a little later today? My stomach hurts. And I'm like, sure. <laughs> <laughs> you can, you know, <laughs> because you are able to. Do, yeah. But I have a semi-final to play and I have to show up regardless of how my cramps, stomach's feeling. Yeah. 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 So I'm saying that people forget that. And it's very important that we come out and talk about this and actually humanize ourselves a little bit. Yeah. Because I think there's way too much. Um, I mean, because we are put on this pedestal, which is great in some ways but in some ways it's really really yeah. lonely yeah. because there's nobody there to really understand what you're going yeah. through at that pedestrian yeah it gets lonely at the top yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah did it ever get overwhelming Sanya because you were so young like you mentioned that you were 12 when you got your first ad ad money um, not money, just, just clothes, just, but yes, okay, the, the, <laughs> Adidas was a big company. The, yeah. Huge company to be associated with, especially in tennis, which has, again, not been done before. Then you are entering these leagues where, it, again, there's like public speculation, like, oh, there is this young girl who is playing tennis now. At the same time, you know, you before that, you've, you've been in school, like a normal... Yeah. Girl, did it get overwhelming? Yeah, many times. Many, many, many times. And um, it's, it got overwhelming to a point where I locked myself up in a room and I was crying for two hours. It got overwhelming to a stage where I needed to ask for help. You know, at different parts. I mean, because of it's been a 20-year journey, it's been many times stretched that, over, yeah, it's yeah. been stretched over time. But there, there were times when I locked myself. I was depressed for two and a half months, three months. I didn't come out of my room. Um, I was hurt. I had hurt my wrist. And... You know, and I think at that time, talking about mental health was also a little bit of a taboo, taboo you know. Yeah. And the people were like, no, no, you're, people will think you're mad. Yeah. That's what it was. And and uh, I remember talking about it even that time, saying that I was not well. Like, I was not feeling well. Um, mm, yeah. You know, and and uh, so, yeah, it, there were many, many occasions where I felt uh, very overwhelmed, very lonely. Um, but I always knew that my life was different. That you were built for something different. I don't know if I was built for something different, but my life was different. Was just, I was just different. Yeah, because um, I didn't go to school the normal way yeah. after a certain point. I um, didn't have a normal routine. You know, I didn't go to coffee shops and meet boys. Like, I didn't have all of that. I would wake up in the morning at 5.30. I used to go and do my fitness and then I used to shower, go to school. Uh, I got permission from school to leave like half an hour earlier so that I could eat my lunch in the auto or whatever in the car uh, and then uh, head straight to the tennis court. My mom used to come with the bags and I used to reach back home at 7.30 in the evening, do my homework, eat dinner and be passed out by 8.30, 9 o'clock. That was my life. Yeah. So it was different, right? Yeah, it was, very different. You know, and, yeah. and then as I became a teenager and I became sort of more exposed to the media and I became who I was and then came the other stuff with it and, and, the, and the tougher stuff you know while you know my friends were just talking about going to colleges and which college to go to I was sitting there and answering questions in a room full of press people you know with with and all kinds of questions that were what I was not prepared yeah, for in yeah. many ways yeah. so I think that uh, it, it 
it got overwhelming but i didn't go insane because of my parents right. and my family i think i had a very solid like friend and family base around me yeah. which i still have the same people who kept me sane right and that's what really didn't drive me like crazy. the grounding of this entire situation yeah grounding to know that you know there's always an option to leave yeah I, I always knew. To, yeah. yeah, you don't have to put yourself through this. If you don't want to do this today, you don't need to do it. And that uh, that was something that was always really good for me, because I chose to do certain things. So right. that's why when anyone asked me, would you change anything about your life? I would say no, because mm. I've chosen these things for myself. Right. Um, you know, if they were forced on me, or if my you know family or my parents would have said no, you need to do this, then I would have maybe said yeah. You know, yeah. I regret not saying no at that point. I wish I did something different. And do you remember the first big call you got, say, saying you've been selected? Uh, you know, whether I was. It was uh, and... I think I was twelve or thirteen. <laughs> you know your age parameters. Yeah, are it's so weird, odd. right? Like, it's, it's really like, weird. I'm like 12, I know. twelve. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like usually yeah. people are like, I was twenty-two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, no, I was like twelve. Was the first time that I played for India. And I think I went to Indonesia, if I'm not wrong. Yeah. And then the second time I played, uh, I was an under 14, uh, representing the country. So that's where you start. You play 14, 16s, 16, and then yeah. you go to the seniors. Um, and then I went to Pakistan, actually, to play my second uh, mm -hmm. one. That was the first time. It was, <laughs> it was uh, very, very exciting, mm -hmm. I remember. I actually, it's quite vague in my head. I don't remember, as you can tell, I was 12. <laughs> yeah. So I don't really remember exactly. But I think that later on in your life, you kind of find, um, you understand the magnitude of things that you've achieved. You don't really understand the things that you've achieved in that when moment. When it's happening, yeah. Yeah, you really don't. Yeah. It's later on, like when I sit down now and I think, oh my God, like, you know. I was I'm 12. On, yeah, I was 12 or I was number one in the world. Like. Yeah. That's when you're like, wow, like I was able to do that. Yeah. You know? was, yeah. So, yeah, but I was 12, 12 or 13, yeah. And did it ever have a, like a counter reaction in school, you know, because while you are achieving great things, you're obviously, you, you're not leading a very normal school yeah. childhood life. No, you know, my school was amazing. My yeah. school was so supportive of sport. Um, that uh, in my fifth grade, I remember very well, my headmistress, who you, who was Mrs. Ali Khan, mm -hmm. she is rather, um, Mrs. Ali Khan, she was uh, the great uh, Nawab Patawadi's sister, mm -hmm. which is Saif Ali Khan's father. Yeah. And so she understood sport very well. Um, and uh, I, uh, my mom took me to her and said, I'm telling her to go play this tournament. She's not going because she doesn't want to miss her attendance. And she said, what's wrong with you? You need to go and play. Mm. So that was the kind of school I came from. Yeah. That was so supportive. supportive yeah. And they, and you know, they basically helped me with my exams. They helped me. So they helped me giving me special classes. The, you know, the teachers, the professors used to stay back for me after wow. school. Yeah. So they were amazing. Yeah. They were really, really amazing. And that's why it's like, it takes a village to do this. Like, yeah. you know, everybody, everything needs to come together. Yeah, it just doesn't it just, happen. No, it yeah. just can't be your own effort journey. alone. Yeah. yeah, it's not your journey. Like yeah. everybody's on this journey with you. Yeah. In 2005, you were 19 when you entered the Australian Open. I was 18. Oh, you were 18, 19. Oh, see, that's what I'm saying. The age <laughs> for Like, I was like, I, I, the comment, I was nine. It was my 19th year. So the comment on the research was like, double check ages. <laughs> <laughs> This, this sounds wrong. <laughs> They're like, no, no, it's right. So you were 18 and you were in the Australian Open. And now, obviously, it's a, it's, it's a very global level. Everybody is yeah. taking notice. What did it feel like then? I think Australian Open changed my life more than any other slams, that I, even the, the ones that I won. Yeah. Because I think that was the first time that people really believed that I had arrived. Mm. Not just me as an individual. I think that was the first time that they believed that a Indian woman or young, Indian young girl from a smaller city can compete against the best in the world. Yeah, that's like... And that was against Serena Williams. <laughs> so when I came back, I remember <laughs> I didn't have time. I didn't have time to breathe. Because you were just inundated with... I like... was just inundated. I was completely... I can't tell you, like, <laughs> I was, my phone was going off the hook. I didn't know where, what I, where I was, what I was doing. I came back to a reception of people, like, at the airport. My wow. 
it was madness it was madness and that was the last time that i was a normal human being it like life af- as you knew it after this <laughs> life after that changed to an extent where right after that was when i i think you know really understood what it meant to be famous and to walk Deal not with, yeah. i mean i think that was the last time i was able to walk you know without Unnoticed, being recognized yeah, yeah. and and as compared to you know in 2009 when you actually won in the australian open with mahesh with mahesh Bhutti. yeah i mean yeah. yeah but by that time i had already, already been, been there. there yeah so, the, so it was different <laughs> it was you know? different like life didn't turn no after, it didn't yeah. turn it just kind of happened but in 2005 my life turned yeah my life turned and in 2005 that very australian open is when i my entire life changed the trajectory of my life changed in so many ways yeah uh in terms of uh, you know becoming a public figure or uh, becoming this household name um in terms of finances i mean everything we right. came from a middle class family yeah. so everything changed everything changed. everything changed do you remember uh, if you bought anything special for your family at that point in time <sighs> you won't believe it but to, even today um I don't manage my, my finances. <laughs> That is such a normal answer on this couch. <laughs> the amount of people, the most well-established people, like we, uh, mother, I don't know. I, I like if finances. you ask me today, Sanya, how much money do you have? I don't know. <laughs> like I don't know. <laughs> so, like it, I mean, it's not because I have that much. It's yeah. just that I just don't, don't know. know. Yeah. Because I, I was just never <laughs> interested. <laughs> My dad manages it. Yeah. And even today, I mean I'm 36 years old. If I'm in Hyderabad and I go home and I know people will find this very funny, but if I have to go out for coffee, I'll go to my mom and I'm like, "Mom, can I have some money?" Because no <laughs> I don't way. have any money in my I mean, I have cards and I have yeah. GP and all this, but she's like, "Can I have some cash?" cash. Like, yeah. I don't have any money. And she'd be like, "How much you need?" And I'd be like, "I don't know. I want to get coffee." <laughs> you tell me. <laughs> That's so I am um I'm that person. Yeah. You know, I for me um money is something it's a byproduct. <sighs> yeah, it really is. And yeah. and I know that like and I know that uh, you know I'm not meaning to sound ungrateful. Of course, That's not yeah. what I'm trying yeah, to say. Yeah, yeah. I'm very happy. You know, we all need money and we all need you know everybody wants to be famous and wants to be recognized and you know but we didn't play tennis for any of this we yeah. played tennis because we loved it because nobody before me even thought that a young girl is going to get that kind of fame and money from that sport anyway or that it's a career option exactly. at all exactly yeah. so we you know we today i feel like you can at least be like okay let me do this so i get this at yeah. that point there was no nothing i'm just playing. benchmark was yeah. not there yeah yeah you know so. and so we were like yeah okay we'll play and you know we'll keep investing money <laughs> yeah. and whatever we'll it's see it's going somewhere yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it was yeah yeah I I don't know <laughs> I really don't know when you ask me <laughs> I don't know people everywhere will relate to this you think <laughs> yeah of course because such a it's a it's an indian thing you know where like <laughs> my, I don't know people sometimes when I tell people this and they're like what and I was like I really don't know like I mean I have a rough figure in my yeah. head but I mean I don't know the investments I don't yeah. know anything and th- so this uh, I'm answering this question when you said did you give your parents anything that's why I came to this it's because um everything I have is theirs like I literally uh, you know like the, uh, when I hear stories of like or oh, they were fighting in the family and there was a court yeah. case where they yeah. the child has put a court case on <laughs> the, the father yeah. or you know on the brother yeah, and yeah. i'm like it's so alien yeah, to me yeah. like uh, so all of us have bank uh, you know cards and all the accounts has everybody's has cards on it like okay. there's nobody that <laughs> like has we individual are a unit yeah, yeah. <laughs> nobody has individual cards yeah so that's why so it's just that's how we and we are very small family it's me my sister and my parents so we're just like that like yeah. we, and my sister's the same like she's you know she's into fashion now yeah. and and she's she, she's her own influencer and she does all her stuff and it's exactly the same <laughs> with everybody with everybody <laughs> <laughs> but like yeah the one the one theme you know that we've picked up throughout this interview is that you've just done things exactly when you want to do it and how you want to do it right like most now, times most times like large like large milestones yeah. in 2009 you won 
And that was like, okay, we, we can say that it was the top, you know, where you've actually really, um, you won that title and it's yeah. set a precedence. 2010, you decide to get married. Again, even though you've been so much in the public eye, that came with its own set of speculation and, you know, like questions upon you, on nationality, on identity. At what point do you, did, you, did you think that, okay, you know what, like it's, I'm, I'm going to make this decision. And was there a thought process that went into it? Did you, was there a contemplation? just simply because of the circumstance of you being so in the public eye? No, there wasn't. Again? Because I'm just not that person. Because right. I, I, you know, I, um, I always tell people, all oh, this is a facade. Like, I'm not this person. Yeah. I'm a very, like, I'm a person who wants to sit in pajamas and eat food all day in bed. Like, <laughs> I mean, I, yeah, I'm that person. Yeah. And who wants to watch Bollywood and listen to Bollywood songs. So, I'm that person. Like, um, so... It doesn't come very naturally for me to think that if I do this, something else will be affected and that person might think that, that about me. me. No. So I don't function that way. Yeah. So any of my life decisions uh, that have come, uh, have never come because of uh, what people may think. Yeah. Kya kahenge is something that no, I just don't just, believe in. Yeah. And my luckily my parents also don't believe in that. Right. And obviously I don't believe in that and my sister and I because of them. Correct. Because they brought us up that Correct. way. Correct, yeah. So at no point at any decision that I make in my life where I think Thank that I should, I if I don't do something or if I do something, it's solely based on what I feel about it. It's at not that point, yeah, at yeah. that moment. Yeah. It's not really based on what a third person will feel and if their sentiments might be hurt yeah. about anything. Yeah. So. And after that, you know, you embraced motherhood the way you did. Did you ever feel the the mom guilt? Like you mentioned now. Yeah, you know, I feel like, it right, right now, now sitting yeah, here. Yeah, but back then when you were still actively playing, traveling, he would travel with you. He was traveling with me, but mom guilt is so real. I mean, I don't know. Are you a mom? No, no I'm not even You're not even married. Yeah. Okay. You'll know if you want to ever become a mom, yeah. how real it is. I mean, you can be um, the most successful person in the world. <laughs> But sometimes you feel like shit because you're just, I don't know if you're allowed to say this on this, yeah, but please, please sometimes please. you feel like crap because as women in general, um, we want to be 100 everywhere. Yeah. We're very self-critical um, and we analyze ourselves and we are the ones to actually be like, oh my God, I was not here and I didn't make it to this and I didn't do this properly and I didn't do that properly. I mean, how should, you know. And mom's guilt is really real. Mm -hmm. And we have, God knows, we have enough people around us telling us how guilty we should be feeling yeah, all yeah, the time, yeah. right? We have all the aunties and uncles of the world telling us, you know, whatever. Yeah, I mean, yeah. so, um, but mom's guilt comes from within, you know, because your uh, love that you have and the time you want to spend with the child is just it's from yourself nobody yeah. needs to tell you that yeah you know so there are times when uh, I'm in my room so he's not here with me he's in Dubai right now and he's coming in in the next three days uh, but um, when sometimes I'm in, when I'm working it's fine but when I'm in my room alone I really miss, miss him. him yeah and I feel like sometimes I'm like is this really all worth it like should I be working and leaving him but the thing is, you know what, if I don't work, I'm going to go mad. <laughs> and yeah. I'm then of no use to anybody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not even to myself and not to my child either. Yeah. You know, so I think that um, uh, loving, uh, being a mother is something that I love. Yeah. It's something that is the greatest joy that I've ever felt. Um, but that's not my only identity. And I think women need to embrace that and be fearless to say that. It does not make you selfish. It does not make you a bad person for choosing yourself, yeah. you know, yeah. once in a while. Because God knows we choose others over us all the time. Most of yeah. the time. <laughs> most of the, most time. of the time. Yeah. So that's why I think that it's very important for me, um, you know, for us to all speak out and say that as women, yes, we might be a wife, we might be a, a daughter or a mother. Yeah. 
but th- those are not our identities yeah what we are is who we are from yeah. within and who i am is this person that is talking to you on the couch this is who i am i mean i'm a mother that is that is a separate uh, identity, identity of mine yeah yeah but you're speaking here because i'm not of speaking this, here yeah, as a mother as i'm a mother. speaking here as sanya mirza yeah. and i am going to continue to do that yeah. you know and th- and that's why i think that uh, when i made a comeback also it was for those young mothers it was for those young mothers who are made to feel so bad you know when they say that you know what i want to go back and work and yeah. they're like yeah but you're too driven why do you want to work yeah too ambitious too ambitious yeah. right but those yeah. words are not used for men yeah ever never yeah never you, ever you were, you i was asked a question 3 days ago sorry to cut you a few days ago in a press conference again asking me that how do you manage your child and your career and your husband how do you juggle yeah yeah, yeah. and i, I said but that. why don't you ask the man the same question you know yeah. why is it just me i don't know why i need to juggle at all like i just, <laughs> i really don't know can like can i just be <laughs> yeah i can i not just be yeah so i think it's very important to understand that and to normalize the fact that it's okay to choose yourself it's mm-hmm. okay to love yourself and mom's guilt will come and go yeah as long as we know that the child is well taken care for he's um, or the child is uh, safe you yeah. know i mean right now he's not here with me because he needs to go to school that is much more important than him <laughs> hanging around my interview and because you miss him after work <laughs> yeah, and, home, and yeah. because i miss him after work it doesn't mean he yeah. doesn't need to go to school yeah, you know yeah. so in practicality this is the correct thing to of do of course yeah. absolutely but some people may say that no but me sitting at home is more correct than me <laughs> which i don't agree with I so don't. yeah <laughs> does he is he aware of his mother's no i think he also knows that we're a different family okay he understands that uh, like uh, now he started asking questions about you know uh, the other day he asked me how does everybody that come to you for a picture know your name is sanya mirza <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> so i said oh i mean what do i say to a child so i said no I played tennis right and you saw me I played on TV so people just recognize me so sweet. so for him though it's yeah. a it, for his normal is somebody random will come and ask him for a picture he'll just stand and take a picture because yeah. that's what he's seen he's his seen, yeah. parents do yeah <laughs> so he thinks it's very normal to do yeah. that and i have to tell him listen you can't take pictures with strangers <laughs> you can't just talk he said yeah but you do right and yeah. i said, i didn't know how to answer that <laughs> question so he definitely is getting that we're different yeah i don't think he truly understands yet yeah yeah but he yeah. understands winning and losing very well oh, and yeah. he never wants to lose yeah <laughs> he, oh, he's he's taking he after that yeah, never yeah never <laughs> so interesting question you know you you spoke about how you were raised uh, and you know the kind of parenting that your parents adopted for you which was so like liberal and you were given choices what is the one thing that you're carrying forward with your son Uh, I think that you know one thing is very different we didn't have any boys in our family <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and now so, there is a boy <laughs> now there is a boy um and my first thing that I want to carry because I think that my parents in 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 their own way um uh, taught us equality even though we didn't have a boy in the family and I don't think that there would be any difference uh, because they let us follow our dreams in the way that we wanted to follow them mm-hmm. um in completely different like my f- sisters into fashion and I played sport like yeah. it's not normal things that people do yeah. uh, or young very girls do choices, yeah it's yeah. very very yeah. different choices yeah. and my parents were very supportive yeah. of it and um, I think they taught us that uh, it doesn't matter what gender you are you can choose what you want to yeah. be Yeah. And for me having a boy um you know and as we know how our society treats boys like you know they're Pedestal. god's gift to mankind but like uh, that is not how he's treated <laughs> at all you know he picks up he has to pick up his own plate and he needs to put it at the sink and that is how he's treated at home and he he's going to continue to be treated but the main thing is what i want to carry forward is that whole equality part that i think that we as women talk about um, you know equality and empowerment but that empowerment doesn't just come from women it also comes from the men yeah. and the men um, are come in form of our brothers and our sons and and our partners and it's our responsibility also to try and if they don't know educate them in that way right. and try and make them understand so for me it's very important for him to understand um that uh, it really doesn't matter if you're a boy or a girl it really doesn't matter who, you can choose to be what you want to be and you know he understands it already you won't believe it he told my um so a relative of mine he was just playing with him a sport and 
my relative was like this guy and his and his wife said i'll come and play which is my hmm. cousin and uh, the guy just said in a fun way he said no no she can't play she's a girl and he turned around and he said of course she can my mom plays tennis wow so that is what i want to carry the, the change yeah. the change in narrative yeah. fantastic okay we're going to go into the next segment really quickly so we've obviously researched so much on you but there are few things we didn't find on google so right now hopefully we will find out yeah, okay find out. okay maybe now i'm just adding one ad hoc because you said it you said you like bollywood movies bollywood songs which is your favorite bollywood movie kuch kuch hota hai oh wow yeah <laughs> so maybe we'll be saying i told you it's a facade i'm actually a very emotional person <laughs> <laughs> any ritual that you practice before stepping on to the court No, I'm not a superstitious person okay. at all. So I don't. Have, I mean, I have my routine, but yeah. it's not really a ritual. Ritual. Yeah. Your biggest fear? Um, my biggest fear to lose touch with reality. Wow, it's very deep. Yeah. 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 That is my biggest fear. Like I yeah. always want to be centered, yeah. not just centered. I want to be real. Right. Like I feel like I I don't need somebody else to tell me. Listen, you're losing touch with reality. This is not how it works. works. Yeah. Your most memorable moment as a sportswoman? I would say becoming number one in the world because I think that we all try and like I said want to be the best. Yeah. And I was very fortunate to be able to be the best in the world. Your celebrity crush? Uh. It has been Akshay Kumar since I was like <laughs> ten years old. Do you, do you? Yeah, still. <laughs> A song that automatically energizes you. Uh, what energizes me? No, I do. I listen to. Uh, I li- like. There's no song that energizes me. Like I listen to. Believe it or not, I listen to like slow music when I'm oh, gymming. Really? Like I was yeah. running for one hour today, and yeah. I was listening to like random like. Uh, Um, love romantic yeah songs. yeah like very what was i listening to i'm trying to think not even one is coming to my head now <laughs> I, was like, i was listening to uh, ya rabba can oh, you believe wow. it yeah. yeah yeah so i'm like that <laughs> what gives you the feeling of home everything i think that we wake up every morning and there's hope right hope. yeah who is the person you call when you have good news to share my sister yeah. How's your relationship with your sister? We're you're best friends. Oh yeah, we're really, really close. Yeah. How cute. Yeah. Three things your sports bag always has: uh, sunscreen, my tennis rackets, strings. I mean, strings? yeah, the ones on the rackets. All. Oh yeah, oh, strings. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I'm so oblivious. Not strings. Life, yeah. Strings. Yeah, I was like, wait, what? Why? <laughs> okay. Amazing. Last question, uh, Sana. There are so many young girls watching you, and you're such an inspiration. Not just girls who want to pursue sports, but girls who want to pursue their heart. And you know, maybe it's not a typical career profession, or they don't want to get <coughs> married early, and they're making their own choices. What advice would you give them? I would just tell them that um, you know we have enough people telling us that we can't do something as women growing up. So you know, believe in yourself because there is no right or wrong uh, career choice. There is no right or wrong age to be married and to have a kid or to not have a kid and not be married as well. Um, you know that is not who def- what defines us as being women. That oh okay, they, you know. Be, uh, Inevitably, we talk about oh, you know, girls like they should be married. Like that's it's an automatic thing that just comes. To the choir. <laughs> like it just I, comes. This is the number one question yeah. I'm asked. Yeah, uh, yeah. Are why? Married? Yeah. yeah. Um, why are you asked? And so I'm just saying to to those young girls that don't be scared to make uh, life choices that are outside of the box. Yeah. And. Uh, be your biggest cheerleader and really back yourself because you know if you don't back yourself nobody else will yeah that's such good advice thank you so much for doing this it's been such a pleasure thank and you so many relatable moments everyone was like yeah i i feel yeah. that <laughs> thanks <laughs> thank thanks for, for having coming. me no it was really really cool to be here and i'm so honored to be your first guest in your studio yeah we are honored <laughs> thank you so much thank you thank you thanks. if you like this episode don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit that bell icon Thank you all for being the best community and I'll see you soon.